Coming to order uh, tonight, we have our great high school uh, students that are going to be speaking. And before that, I just, uh, as I will do in a regular meeting, want to give a big, big uh, shout out uh, to Putnam Vocational Technical Academy as they, uh, the boys division one are striving to bring back the state championship. We wish them the best. Let's give them a big round of applause. I also want to wish our Central Division I girls hoop team uh, that are uh, going out to the eastern part of the state to once again bring back uh, the state championship. Let's wish them the best of luck and congratulations to them. <laughs> congratulations also to the uh, Central uh, uh, Boys Division I basketball team. Putnam had beat them in the Western Mass Championship. Vice Chair Chris Collins and I were up at Curry Hicks Cage and also to the Central Division I wrestling state champions uh, also. So uh, we are the, um, uh, the, they are the home of uh, scholars and champions as are the rest of our uh, high school. So we wish them uh, the best. With that, we now have uh, Springfield Renaissance in the house. Uh, Riven Gazello. Uh, Nazare Gonzalez, Tejur Hollins, accompanied by Daniel Pear, assistant principal. If I pronounced your name wrong, please, please correct me and come on down. Springfield Renaissance School. <laughs> and your, your student rep, by the way, Delphine uh, Zigwadi, is, uh, she'll be here shortly. She does a great job uh, with us on the school committee, too. I can start. You're all <laughs> set to rock and roll. Hello, my name is Tezor, and this is Nazarelli, and we're going to talk about the, the ninth grade expedition and our learning experience and, and connections with the community. For the current ninth grade expedition, we took part in learning about warfare and its tactics. We have a great, honored, and utterly grateful to have the opportunity to talk to veterans and interview them and write a narrative based on the information we gathered. In addition to, the, to writing the narrative, we read a book called Unbroken, which was about an American uh, Olympic runner who enlisted in the Air Force and had an awful experience when captured and put into a prisoner of war camp by the Japanese. To start off the expedition in history class, we looked at videos of the defects that war had on soldiers, such as a shell shock in addition to the lifetime mental and physical injuries, for instance, TBI, traumatic brain injury, and PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. We had a project surrounding this topic focusing on what exactly are PTSD and TBI. While, excuse me, while including statistics and images of both the disorder and injury, trying to express how, uh, trying to express how soldiers uh, may act and the percentage of those who will live with this for the rest of their lives. Then uh, we read short stories of the living conditions in the trenches and looked at maps of how the battlefields were organized. To add a touch of fun, we did an activity imitating war, where we turned the cafeteria into a battlefield and used paper balls as the ammo. This helped us understand how exactly soldiers battle in a real life. Now, in the Springfield Renaissance School, a lot of topics uh, we learned about intertwine with uh, multiple classes. In ELA, we, of course, did the interview with uh, veterans and wrote our, and, uh, wrote our narratives as as uh, my classmate Tejor previously stated. We even had the privilege to sit down and got to have a conversation with the ninth grade assistant principal, Mr. Daniel Pear. He was very open and answered all of our questions in addition to showing us pictures. He gave us a better understanding of what it was like to serve and what it is like to be a veteran. Overall, this expedition impacted uh, myself, Atejor, and many others. We must thank those who fight for us and acknowledge that every day is a blessing. Thank you. Nice job, Ms. Gonzalez. Mr. Ho Mr. Ho Mr. Hollins, Mr. Hollins. Mr. Hollins, Joe Hollins, any relation? Great, great hoop player at Putnam in the old days. Okay, great job, thank you very much. Springfield Conservatory of the Arts is in the house. Marta Carabello, Laurie Amengo, and Benny Paban. Please, if I pronounce your name wrong, correct me. Accompanied by uh, Principal Mr. Sacker, Ryan Kelly, and Assistant Principal William Soto. Come on down. Did I pronounce your names right? It's Benny David Pabone. Benny David Pabone. 
Okay. Good evening, good evening, everyone. My name is Benny David Pabone. I was born in Springfield, Massachusetts. I lived here my whole life. Uh, this year, I'm a junior at Conservatory of the Arts. Uh, I love science, hence I am planning to attend a four-year college to major as a physician assistant. Even though I am a junior, I'm looking at two colleges, Quinnipiac in Connecticut and Springfield College. Currently, I am taking honors math, English, and AP art. Through, though I have a strong academic GPA, the programs that I have looked into are very competitive, so I need a strong SAT score. I'm very thankful for what was given, the opportunity to take the SAT courses on Saturdays. They've given me, they've given me the time to study with Khan Academy and with my SAT coach. I am very confident to take the SAT this upcoming April. Good luck, congratulations. My name is Laura Armengo. I was born in the Dominican Republic. I lived there for 13 years. I moved to Springfield, Massachusetts when I was in a grade. When I lived here, I did not know to speak English. It was a difficult process, but I learned it. I am in 11th grade at the Conservatory of the Art. When I graduated from high school, I want to go to college. I want to study criminal justice and become a lawyer. In the SAT program, I learned more things about how the SAT is set up and what kind of questions I will, uh, I will be asked. I will take the SAT at my school in April and I will decide if I will take the tour in this summer. This program is working distant from my, my house I get to practice my English, work in the SAT, have lunch, and, and talk with some college. I have a strong GPA. I am, I am a member of the National Honor Society, and I hope to attend, attend a four-year college from high school. This class will, be, will help me improve my SAT score and help me get into college. Thank Great you. Job, Great job, Lori. Great job. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Laura, your English is very well, very well, very good. Alternative schools are in the house from the High School of Completion program. Destiny Santana is here, Madison McCarter, and from Liberty Prep Academy, Tiffany Donnell, accompanied by Principal Rhonda Jacobs, uh, Jennifer McQuaid, Assistant Principal, and Linda LaSorsa, School Counselor. Come on down. Good afternoon, everyone, and my name is Madison McCarter. I came here to speak about my experience at the high school completion. I attended to the High School of Commerce from my freshman year to my 12th grade year. When I started my senior year last year from 2017 to 2018, I started slacking in all my classes and stopped going to school regularly. My dean noticed that my absences and my grades were poor, and I, they suggested that I work home online and continue to go from there. I started to fail my classes and began to fail further and further behind. I had to go to summer school at Commerce, and I got kicked out for fighting and failed all my classes. My mom was very worried about me, and after many conversations with my counselor, they told me about the high school of completion. When I started to go to the high school completion, I talked to my counselor, Joe, and we broke down steps to see where I can do to graduate on time. I started coming and I had minor issues. I got sent out of some of my classes. I had a, meetings with my teachers, my mom, and my counselor, Ms. McQuaid, and we came up with another plan and clear expectations around my behavior at school. Most of my frustration was coming from, from the program was from home. I started being stressed out and I had to work around my schedule to move further on. Before I started every session of my classes, I always had broke down a plan to what I was gonna do to further on my education. I am proud to say I have two online courses left to finish. I've passed all my MCAS and I will be graduating this year in June. 
My past two years have not been easy, but going to the high school completion was worth it. And I recommend others who are struggling to give the high school completion a try before dropping out and giving up. Good story, good story. <clears throat> good evening, everyone. My name is Destiny Santana, and I'm a I am a student at high school completion program. I attended SciTech as a high school student from grades nine to 11. I used to always skip class and never do my work. My counselor noticed my absences and failing grades and made me a plan and made a plan for me to graduate. This plan included staying in one class all day, doing an online credit recovery. At first I was fine with it and then after a while I missed being in the mix, which sounds like me at the time, so I just stopped attending. About two months later, I woke up one morning and called SciTech to go back to school. They said I had, I had already been dropped as a student. That's when reality hit. At this point, I was working and planning on getting my GED because it was better than doing nothing at the time. One morning this past summer while getting ready for work, 22 News was on TV live from Central High School. They were saying they were now accepting high school dropouts for a second chance. I called Central ASAP talked to Mr. Guy and had a meeting with him that Monday. <clears throat> During our meeting, he thought it would be best for me to attend the high school completion program. On the first day of school, I went and met with Mrs. McQuaid. At this time, I already had a vision and I was past being a failure. I told Ms. McQuaid I had issues in the past, but I had changed and I was here to finish high school and get my diploma. I started the next day. My first my first day, my counselor Joe created a plan for me to graduate. My counselor Joe has helped me a lot. I've earned eight credits so far. I attended classes at high school completion, night school at Central, and worked online. I appreciate this program and the opportunities it has provided. My whole pers perspective on school has changed, and I no longer care to be in the mix or even about friends. I'm in class when I'm assigned to be, and I get my work done. School is not my struggle in anymore, and I can say that proudly. I have worked very hard this year and I will graduate this June. Good evening, Superintendent Ward Warwick, Mayor Sarno, and members of the school committee. My name is Tiffany and I'd like to speak about my experience at Liberty Prep. When I was leaving Cornerstone Recovery Program and planning my next steps, I decided with m the help of my case manager to try to finish high school. I am a recovering alcoholic addict and so she called Liberty Prep and set up a meeting. After the meeting, I decided to re-enroll in high school. I had not attended Auburn High School since August 2017. My first few days were rough, commuting back and forth from my apartment in Chicopee and I thought to myself, I couldn't do this anymore and was about to give up on high school. I had tons of support at Liberty Prep and I was able to push myself through and things started to turn out okay. Liberty Prep helped me with my recovery as well with my graduation plan. With help from the school and the ability to take classes at night school and high school completion program, I finished all my classes quickly before my eyes. All of the staff are wonderful. They got me engaged in school and I even signed up for college, which I would have never done if it wasn't for all of the support and love at this school. I even got coffee before night school some nights from the Joe's security guard to help keep me awake. Liberty Prep is a great school. Even when you are struggling, you are assured that you will get through it. I finished all my required courses in mid-December and I started classes at HCC in January. I am taking <laughs> I am currently taking two required prerequisite classes so I may start the vet tech program in the fall. I feel like without Liberty Prep I wouldn't have pursued college because I really didn't care or think about it at all. The school helped remind me how important education is in this life and helped me get to college. I still currently visit R Liberty Prep and HSCP. I love to attend all the groups, take place at LPA, and visit with staff and students. I'd like to give a special thanks to Ms. LaSorsa and Mrs. Foster for helping me with college. Tiffany, that's a great story. You're a great inspiration. You can see you're making a difference because uh, uh, Ms. McQuaid there has tears in her eyes, and, and this is why some of the veteran school committee members 
uh, many years ago when we put the school in place, some of us took a little flack for it, why we were doing it. This is exactly why we're doing it. So you're a great testament and role model for those who are dealing with adversity. Very proud of you. Very Thank proud you. of you. That's uh, from Gateway to College in the house, and uh, it's uh, Sophia, if I'm saying it wrong, Bay, accompanied by uh, uh, Rhonda Jacobs and Vivian Ostrowski, Program Director. Miss Bay, come on down. Hello and good evening, everyone. My name is Sophia Bay, and I'm a part of the Gateway to College program. Prior to the Gateway to College program, I went to a private Muslim school in Connecticut. And at the school, once you enter the 11th grade, you automatically became a part of the dual enrollment program. But the dual enrollment program wasn't enough for me. The travel to and from the high, the high cost of paying the Connecticut Community College system would have made it difficult for my family. So with the help of my parents, I decided to enroll in the Gateway to College program, where I would be a full-time college student, gaining high school credits while also gaining college credits. It was, it was local. and paid for by the local system, and I know how very lucky I am. I am currently a senior in high school, and I'm due to graduate this June, and on top of that, I will be graduating with 24 college credits already. I chose Gateway to, high, Gateway to College because I felt that it was a great way for me to give myself a head start in my college experience, and I also would be able to be more independent and prepared for when I actually go off to college. I am very stimulated and am learning great stuff in this program. Also, because um, Gateway to College is so amazing, because it's a great place for students to decide and look into careers that they might want to go into further in the future. Being able to take classes of their interests, benefiting from the great programs that HCC offers, and many more things. Gateway also allows students a sense of freedom and independence that you cannot get in a typical high school, while nurturing the students who may need help, who may need more help than other students. I feel supported and tended to. This is my second semester in Gateway, and I've taken a total of seven college classes, classes like sign language, college math, English 101, and criminal justice. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some challenges being in such an advanced program, but there are things that we would go through no matter what time we started college. But being in Gateway to College allows us to face and overcome some of these challenges before we even finish with high school. The administration for Gateway is one of the main reasons why Gateway is so special. They're the most caring, positive, and helpful people you will ever meet. They are also there to help us whenever we need them, no matter what it might be for, whether it's trying to figure out what we'll do after college or helping us find programs and things to partake in that may help us in our field of interest. Navigating any school or college system is a challenge, and they intentionally work to make it easy for young people, some of whom are who are doing this without family support. Everyone has a different academic path and gateway. Students with different interests take different classes. Students who don't place into college level classes take classes to prepare them for their college and their college classes. Some students start, start in the fall, like I did, and some start in January, which is the second semester of the college school year. We have students from many different districts in Gateway. And as an example, I was in both my sustainability and clean energy class with a girl from Westfield who was a part of the Gateway program as well. This semester at Gateway, we'll be taking college trips, going to the Cape, and having prom. This semester at HCC, we'll use, tutoring center, we'll use the tutoring center, be DJs at the radio station, active in the student senate, involved in clubs like Student on the Autism Spectrum, QSA, Phi Theta Kappa in the Anime Club, and we'll be going to Boston and the Bronx Zoo with the HCC students. We had 15 graduates in January from the Gateway program, and we will have about 30 more in June, 19 of which are from Springfield. Thank you. Nice job, Ms. Bay. Thank you. <laughs> well, we have just a bit of a late arrival from Springfield Renaissance uh, School. Uh, Ms. Gazello is here. Come on down. Oh, could, uh, no, is it, uh, is it Marta? Yes. Oh, Marta yes. Carabello. I'm sorry, from Springfield Conservatory of the Arts. I apologize, Marta. That's fine. 
So my name is Marta Caraballo. I lived in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for 15 years. I moved to Springfield, Massachusetts, 2017, going into the 10th grade. I'm currently a junior in Conservatory of the Arts, and I take all honors in AP courses. I hope to one day become a surgeon. I took the PSAT test in my school in October, and I realized I did need an improvement. So I've been going to the you know, PSAT Saturday classes since very early February with the goal of improving my SAT scores. When we arrive, we all together sit in the gym, and it's a great, great opportunity for me to be around people in my community, you know, kids from my community. Then we all go to our classrooms, do warm-ups. Um, the goal in our class, to, for the class, is to improve our skills and options for college admissions. It's also good that they give us, you know, food there, you know, Saturdays, <laughs> early, we're with them. And they do invite colleges to speak to us, to speak about, like, what they expect us to have for our colleges. I'm taking the Real at my school in April. Thank you so much to Springfield, Con Springfield Public Schools for the opportunity, you know, <laughs> so we could take the SAT course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carabello. Uh, the High School of Science and Technology is in the house. Uh, Deanny uh, Castillo and Josie Osterman, if I pronounce it wrong, correct me, accompanied by Principal Kevin Laleen and Assistant uh, Principal Timothy Malone. Come on down, kids. <laughs> Please correct me if I said your name wrong. Joseli. Joseli, okay, thank you. Good evening, school committee members and members of the public. I'm Diani Custodio. And I am Joseli Osterman. And we are members of the class of 2021 at the High School of Science and Technology. We are here today to show you what we have studied and what skills we have learned as we prepare for this year's MCAS test, graduation, and life. In our reading and writing enrichment class, we have been practicing persuasive writing by studying different perspectives on social justice issues and writing letters and essays. We learned and showing both sides we learned sh that showing both sides of an issue fairly is the best way to argue fairly, and that proving your point requires good evidence and good explanations. This can help us with the structure of writing in your MCAS, and this can also help us change people's perspective on things for a better future as individuals in Springfield and beyond it. Not only that, these strategies have prepared us to present you an, an, with a neatly and organized presentation tonight. Across the 10th grade, we have grown to be more focused and driven throughout this year, and we have come a long way since September. Students are more engaged in the lessons in their classrooms. They put more effort into their work than ever before, and we, we care more for what we're doing and who we are doing it with. This helps us grow as individuals and as a school together, and us growing and being more mature is what makes our outcome, the future, and the next generation strong. We are honored to be here today representing our class in our school as evidence of that growth. We are nervous about the MCAS, like all students. We could talk about our strengths and weaknesses for a long, long time, but we, but we feel confident that we will do well on them thanks to our teachers and our work. Thank, Thank you, you for, for your, your time. time. Nice job, ladies. Springfield Central's in the house, the home of uh, scholars and champions, Cadet Anna Batista, Cadet Abigail Lozada, who's a junior, accompanied by Major William Keita, United States Air Force retired, senior aerosmith science instructor who does a great job. We're so, so proud of our junior ROTC, one of the largest in, and award-winning ones in the country. Ladies, the podium is yours. Good evening, Mayor Sarno, Mr. Warwick, and school committee members. I'm Cadet Anna Bautista, a junior at Springfield Central High School, the school of scholars and champions. I enjoy attending Central High School because of the many opportunities it provides for students and how Central challenges students to be their best. Being a cadet in the Air Force Junior ROTC, the instructors have taught me leadership skills and now I'm currently the community service officer for my junior class as well as a co-captain and inspection commander for the Brandy Flames drill team. Academically, I'm taking all honors classes and one AP class. I currently hold a 4.0 GPA and am involved in several clubs to include <laughs> 
I am also involved in several clubs to include the Red Cross Club, Young Life, and National Honor Society. I am also playing tennis for the girls' varsity team in which we hope to win league champs for a third year. All right, very good. I'm Cadet Abigail Lozada. I'm a junior as well. I currently hold the position as being the inspection captain of the Air Force JRTC Unarmed Lady Eagles drill team. I was also the squadron commander in JRTC. Lastly, I'm the junior commander for all juniors in JRTC, and academically, I currently have a GPA of 3.6. I am honored tonight to talk about the accomplishment at Central High School. For academics, we have a close to a 25% of Central students on the honor roll. Going on to guidance, we have a game change program with the New England Patriots and anti-violence training program on February 14th to include 20 plus student participants. Benjamin Russell was an MLK scholarship recipient and woman in STEM fields and scholarship writing information sessions with the Bay Path. There has been an increase in participation in dual enrollment classes at local colleges, and there are currently 122 John and Abigail Adams scholarship recipients. Lastly, there has been an increase of students enrolled in the SAT prep classes prior to SAT school day as well as an increased FAFSA completion rates from previous years. You Moving on all to... It's all business, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> like Moving on to athletics. For football, we were a state champions, Western Mass champions, and league champions. For girls cr cross country, <laughs> girls volleyball, and boys soccer, we were league champions. For re wrestling, we were all state champions, state champions, dual state champions, low holiday tournament champions, and Western Mass champions. We got a seven Western, seven Western Mass champions, two state champions, three all state champions, and one New England champion. Darby McLaughlin and Caesar Alvin won Athlete of the Week honors, and 13 wrestlers were on academic honor roll. For girls wrestling, we had one all state champion, for girls basketball, we were league champions, Western Mass champions, and are playing in the state championship. Boys basketball, we are league champions in the finals for Western Mass on March 8, 2019, and are Sparta tournament champions in Lynn Mass. For boys swimming, Ben Russell won the Top Scholar Athlete Award. For girls indoor track, Kyla Hill was the state champion and Western Mass champion. For the bowling team, they are, they are in Division II state championship. And lastly, for a full scholarships athlete, eight students have earned full scholarship athlete. <laughs> Moving on to Air Force JROTC. There have been multiple visits to the Holick Soldiers Home for Ice Cream Social. The Golden Pink's Cancer Awareness Team has supported the Children's Hospital Telethon. The Color Guard team represented the colors for the, families, for the Family Dollar Store grand opening, and there have been over 90 cadets marching in the Holyoke Oak St. Patrick's Day Parade. The Joe teams have added over 10 more trophies in their last two competitions, and the Joe teams will be attending the Nationals Air Force JROTC Joe competition in Dayton, Ohio, later next week, March 21st, through the 24th. There has also been participating, participating in Griffin's Friends Cancer Walk in April, and there have been over 100 cadets on the honor roll. Thank you for having us today. It is an honor. Have a good day. It's an honor. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Major, they're all business, all business. And thanks for all the uh, veterans events that your color guard does for us, too. We appreciate that. Roger L. Putnam Vocational Technical Academy uh, is in the house. I just saw uh, Marvin Sims. Mr. Sims, the dean of students, is here. Lisa Lopez, come on down.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me. Thank you. My name is Lishali Lopez Sanchez, and I'm a student at Roger L. Putnam Vocational Technical Academy. And I'm in the Allied Health shop, and it's my senior year, and I actually never thought I'd be sad to leave high school. <laughs> I was born here in Springfield, Massachusetts, but I moved to Puerto Rico when I was eight years old. And a few years later, I was bullied all throughout my middle school years, and I faced depression and was diagnosed with generalized anxiety. Uh, that was a few months before my freshman year of high school. And then two years later, my parents told me that we'd be moving back to Springfield, and I was actually really happy because I felt like it was a new opportunity just to start anew and overcome my anxiety once and for all. For those first few months, I kept battling with my anxiety, but I kept going on with my treatment when I was here. And even though I wasn't a freshman and I was a junior, they gave me the opportunity to have a small tour of the school, so I was more used to it, and of the shop, and even some of the academic teachers that I would have. Then the first day of school came, and I won't lie, I was very nervous, but I survived, and it was easy to. The counselors were amazing. For example, last year, Ms. Maza, who was my counselor, she helped me so much when I got started and all throughout the school year, even for senior year when I'm not even her student anymore. I met Mr. Sims, and I'm, it's an honor because I wouldn't be here for, if it wasn't for him today. And I swear there's not a single person who doesn't love him at our school. I mean, he even gives us snacks. <laughs> I have maintained a 4.0 GPA, and I'm part of the National Honor Society. And I have the honor to be the historian of the National Honor Society, and I've also had the opportunity to experience co-op, which lets me know what it's like to live in a workplace while going to school at the same time. So Putnam gives you two experience in one. How amazing is that? <laughs> And I've reconnected with friends from my childhood. I've met new friends. And when I was bullied, I thought I was always alone. And I thought I'd be like that for the rest of my life. But when I got to Putnam, everything changed. I started coming out of my shell. And I'm surrounded all the time by people who love me and accept me for who I am. And I've been the happiest I've been for years. I'm proud to say my psychologist has declared me anxiety free. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very excited for college. But at the same time, I don't want to leave. <laughs> Even though I know I'll be in contact with everyone from school, and I'll definitely come visit. I want to thank all the school faculty and every classmate for giving me memories that I'll never forget, and for giving me the chance to, of another family that I can be a part of. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> Me goosebumps. Great job, Lisa. Great job. Well, my alma mater's in the house, the High School of Commerce. Xavier Griswold, uh, Alejandra Cruz, accompanied by uh, Mr. Lunsford, Rick Lunsford, teacher. Come on down. If I pronounced your name wrong, please correct me. What do we need to start now? Good evening, um, Mayor Sarno, Superintendent Warwick, and members of the school committee. My name is Alejandra Cruz. And my name is Xavier Griswold, and we are both currently juniors at the High School of Commerce. Currently at the High School of Commerce, we are excelling in our athletics. We, our basketball team recently made playoffs, mm -hmm. and our track and field team are two-time defending all city champs. Also currently at Commerce, we are planning our 24th annual military ball that also includes our achieving ROTC program. As of now, we are divided into three sections, the High School of Commerce, the Springfield Honors Academy, and Pathways at Commerce. I remember as a freshman walking into a unified commerce, and I'm looking forward to doing it again during the next school year. This year, we were introduced to a new program known as Virtual High School. I personally was a part of this program. I was initially not on board, but I agree it's a good technology support. My experience at the High School of Commerce has overall been positive. Hold on. And I've been here since I was a freshman, and I've watched it change. During my years, I've made many memories and many friends. 
Um, and I qualified, I took, I pa You're doing fine. Huh? You're doing fine. Oh. I passed on my MCAS first try and qualified for the John Adams Scholarship. I've attended Commerce since I was a freshman, and aside from the negative reputation, my experience at Commerce has been positive. I've maintained strong grades throughout the years, and I've learned a lot. I also passed all three MCAS and one try because of hard work and determination. Commerce is known for having different cultures and a diverse, diverse population. We look forward to graduating and being part of Class 2020. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak on behalf of the High School of Commerce. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Way to go, Red Raiders. Always remember and never forget Commerce Pride. Very good, very good. Springfield's Honors Academy at the High School of Commerce is in the house. Uh, Ashley Judkins, uh, Lila Cabodia, and they're accompanied by uh, their ELA teacher, Miss Margaret Hers Hershey. If I pronounce names wrong, please correct me. Come on down, ladies. Um, good evening, school board. I'm Layla Kibodia, a sophomore at Springfield Honors Academy. High school is a platform to explore whatever you want, and this school makes sure that you're able to do so. SHA provides various opportunities to lead and be part of something big. We have many clubs and electives to participate in. I myself participate in many things, including ROTC, band, and sports. Because these three things are not available at our school, we share it with Commerce. This partnership has been amazing, an amazing experience. Because Commerce has allowed us to join them in these extracurriculars, I've had the opportunity to explore my leadership, to explore new leadership opportunities and advance my skills on my instrument and in soccer. I've also been able to make many new friends. At our school, we also have clubs exclusive to SHA. One club that I'm a part of is Stuco. Stuco is the student council of the school. The role I play is president. As president, I chair meetings, give out orders, and see them through. We recently went to an annual mass conference in Cape Cod. This was a great experience because as a new Stuco, we got to learn many things, from ideas for events to different structures of student councils. It felt great to be a part of something bigger, and we are excited to continue working with Stucos around us. Because I am able to be a part of so many things, I get to meet many amazing people with different backgrounds, and I'm able to challenge myself in different tasks. I can definitely say that SHA has given me the tools to become a better leader and resources for others. I'm, I'm excited to see the school grow and the students in it. Thank you, school nice board. Job, Mr. Good evening, Mayor, Superintendent, and School Board. My name is Ashley Judkins, and I'm a freshman at Springfield Honors Academy. When I first came to SHA, I was a little on edge. Because SHA was such a new school to me, I wasn't sure if I would be comfortable attending the school. But within the first few weeks, I was able to build trust with both my principals and my teachers. The staff at SHA still continue to make me feel welcome and appreciated every day. The students at SHA have also built a trust system with each other. We help each other by planning study halls together, study group chats, and there is a student-led homework help class on Google Classroom. As the work given is very challenging, but with the help of and guidance of peers, we manage to get it done. As high school students, our principal understands that we have a lot on our plates, and she also, but she also expects us to go above and beyond with our work. Principal HD will sit us down in a room and talk to us about how we need to better ourselves in order to be the best for the world and to achieve the goals that we want to achieve. And we all know she means everything that she says. The teachers also personally push students to do their best even on bad days. I am able to work with my teachers when I need assistance on any of my assignments and they are willing to give me the help and support that I need. So far, I have quite a few personal achievements when it comes to being a student leader at SHA. I am a part of the Anchors program. Anchors are student leaders that help 
other students when they have any issues or concerns in school of, with, with their personal lives or with school needs. My special personalities, my personal specialties are relationships of any kind. I am available to other students to talk about any other personal or school related issues and I am also able to give useful advice and help them whenever they may need it. Aside from anchors, I am also in a step team called DSG. DSG is a step team of freshman girls that one day watched a video of our Vice Principal Cooper's college step teams and decided we wanted to step together. Now we are over three months in with 10 steppers, one coach, and three honorary members. I am proud to say that I am captain of this team. Our principals are very helpful and they fully support us in everything that we do. We, DSG is also performing at the school's Raise Your Voice event that you are all invited to. Raise Your Voice is a student organized event and it is a chance for students to talk, write, speak, or in any way showcase how they feel about the social, social injustices in the world. The event is going to be on April 5th in the Commerce Auditorium. I hope you all will be there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chester. Nice job. <laughs> Ms. Cabodia, any relation to Kareem? Did a great job for me as an intern. Now he works for Congressman Neal, too, so very good. That concludes our uh, high school students uh, speak out. We'll have a one-minute recess. You're more than welcome. Oh, you do? How could I miss Duggan, huh? <laughs> I'm, it's not on the... Come on down, Duggan. <laughs> Thank you. Assistant Associate Principal Huckabee. What is your name, young lady? And Alexis I Jimenez. Alexis Jimenez. Ms. Jimenez, the floor <laughs> is yours. Duggan well, Academy in the house. Yes. <laughs> um, good morning, members of the school committee. Uh, my name, again, is Alexis Jimenez, and I am the valedictorian of the class of 2019 at John J. Duggan Academy. <laughs> Um, walking doubtfully into my freshman year of high school, I was unsure if I would succeed where I was attending, but after my first day, I knew. Duggan Academy has helped me learn, prosper, blossom, and grow. From the teachers to the counselors to my peers, they've helped me flourish and motivated me through their support and guidance. Um, as I once mentioned, again, <laughs> I'm valedictorian of the class of 2019, a national, <laughs> a national Honor Society member of scholars and am an acceptance student at Penn State University College of Nursing. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> um, despite my support through my successes, my school has given me many life-changing and eye-opening opportunities. In April of 2018, I attended a Black Historic College tour, uh, an opportunity given to me from my school to tour many colleges all over the East Coast of the United States. This encouraged me to attend the best fit college for me, to attend somewhere that made me feel at home as much as Duggan Academy does now. Our school presents a social justice community through its participation in the acts of real life issues. In 2018, some of my peers and I, along with Duggan Academy staff, attended the March for Our Lives protest in Boston, Massachusetts against the unjust acts of gun violence in our nation. As students of a school who live in a world where school shootings and gun violence are taking place, we as a Duggan community were grateful for this opportunity to voice ourselves, as I am able to do right now in front of you. Duggan Academy, has enabled students to find themselves through their time, opportunities, and support given to them, and as well as myself. But after finding my place in the world with the guidance of Duggan Academy, I will never walk doubtfully again into any place. Thank you. Nice job. Mm -hmm. I believe that now concludes our high school speak out. We'll take a one minute recess. You're more than welcome to stay and 
thank you and continued success to each and every one of you. We're very, very proud of you. Certainly are. They're doing, yeah, doing fine.
Good evening, everyone. We're going to call the meeting uh, uh, to order. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Present. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone, and we are very hopeful that the Putnam Vocational Technical Academy, our Division I boys hoop team, will bring back another state championship, as with our girls, a central uh, high Division I girls uh, basketball team, which are playing for the state championships again this weekend. So let's give them a big round of applause. We're also joined by our student representative, Delfina Ziguadi, who's here from Springfield Renaissance. If we could all please rise for a moment of silence and then a pledge of allegiance. much. We will now move to approve the minutes of the February 14, 2019 regular school committee meeting and the February 28, 2019 uh, Chapter 74 advisory school committee at the Putnam Vocational Technical Academy. A wonderful event and wonderful hospitality. Any questions or comments? So moved. Hearing none, a motion by Vice Chair Collins is there second. Second by Ms. Hurst. Everybody, in, all those in favor say aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you. Move to section three. These are items requiring a vote of the school committee. Uh, this is to approve the City of Springfield High School Diploma for Hector Rodriguez, Jr. Superintendent Warwick, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as you can see from the memorandum in your packet, that's as complete with all the requirements. We're re recommending a diploma. Thank you, Superintendent Warwick. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, there's a motion on the floor. Motion by Ms. Hurst or second? Second by Ms. Naylor. Roll call vote is required. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, more than sufficient votes. The matter <coughs> passes. Congratulations, Mr. Rodriguez. And uh, uh, Ms. Perez, unfortunately, is unable to be here due to a, a family obligation. A B is to approve the Elias Brookings uh, students travel, school students travel to Old Dominion University in Norfolk, uh, Virginia, July 7th uh, through the 13th, 2019. I see that Principal Terry, the great Principal Terry Poe is in the crowd. Superintendent Warwick. Yeah, I was just reviewing the trip. It's, it looks outstanding for the kids this summer, so I'm recommending approval. The field trip appro approval form is in your packet. Thank you, Superintendent it's Warwick. It's really exciting there. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, is there a motion on the floor? So Motion by Vice Chair Collins or second? Second by Ms. Uh, Naylor. Roll call vote is required. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Naylor? Yes. Ms. Perez? Yes. Captain? Chair Murphy? Yes. Ms. Hurst? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. 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 yes, more than sufficient votes to matter passes. Have a great trip, Terry. Uh, we now move to uh, C uh, to approve the Putnam, bless you, to approve the Putnam Vocational Technical Academy students travel to China. China, June 25th, 2019, July 3rd, 2019. Superintendent Warwick. Thank you, Mayor. The field trip approval form is in your packet. Uh, this looks like another great trip, really exciting for the kids at Putnam, so I'm recommending approval. Thank you, Superintendent Warwick. Any questions or comments? Just yes, Ms. Naylor. No? I was going to ask a question about the cost of students. And the method of payment says parents pay, so I just wanted to know about what, what does it look like as far as the number of students that are planning to go that are able to go? And is there some fundraising or something in place for students who cannot go? Yeah, we have Carmelo Olivares from Putnam here. You want to come up and speak to the trip? Thank you, Carmelo, Mr. Olivares. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the... I was, I apologize, the mic is a little low. Uh, I wanted just clarity as far as it says here the method of payment is that parents will pay. Is there a fundraising or something in place for students who cannot afford that? Yeah, we have, uh, we pretty much open it to whoever. One of the reasons I do this is because I want to make sure that our students have access to those opportunities. Okay. 
it is not a cheap trip. Right. But at the same time, if there's a student that really wants to do it, we want to make sure that we give them support. Parents usually say no because it's taken them out of the country and they feel like it's going to be a huge amount. Mm -hmm. And I try to secure them and, and tell them, you know, we're going to do fundraising and so on. Parents will not release. Um, I've been doing this for several years and I'm really excited about it. The fact that I tell, I ask the kids, where do you want to go in the world? And they chose China. Okay. And um, it, I explained to the parents, this is not the cheapest trip, but <laughs> I'm willing to work with you guys. Um, and we had six kids that uh, joined uh, the trip and sadly two of them had to back out uh, because of medical reasons. They were twins. Okay. And but four that are super excited about going and uh, are excited about seeing the world in a very different way. I will tell you that uh, we just came from uh, Italy and one of the quotes that will never leave my head is the students that came said, mister, you know what? I'm never gonna be the same. <laughs> and I said, why is that? Because once you see this, you realize how small the world is. Right. And I asked them, so you're gonna do this again? All of them, absolutely. So that makes me excited. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Thank Haley. You. Well, any other questions? Yes. Mr. Vice Chair will, Collins? You will get a- uh, Mr. Alvarez? <coughs> make sure there are no travel advisories before you depart. Yeah, I mean, everything goes through EF Tours, which has been around for 50 years. They constantly will adjust. If there's any kind of a question regarding safety, they will automatically shut it down, um, which is why I chose them because they are super reliable and I like the fact that they're looking out for our interest, not theirs. It's not about them making money, it's more about making these possibilities real. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. They must be, I tell you what, I, while it's a lot of money for an individual mm -hmm. to pay, $3,500 to go to China is a bargain. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you that my coworker told me, you know, I went to uh, Costa Rica with that same company when she was a student. So that kind of, you know, makes me feel even more secure that it's been around that long and they have an amazing track record. Thank you, Vice Chair Collins. Thank you, Kamala. Any other questions, Mr. Alvarez? Yeah. Yes, Delphine, Delphina. Australia, New Zealand, and Hawaii. Um, I was a part of the EF tour for Springfield Renaissance School um, this past summer, and I think it's a really great opportunity. Awesome. awesome. Isn't it amazing? It was amazing. Amazing. Geez, we went to, mu to the museum when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Springfield Museum, yeah. It was a big deal for me as a kid, but. Uh, <laughs> Springfield, no, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Any. I needed a laugh anyways. Um, any other questions or comments? <laughs> so moved. Okay, there is a motion by Vice Chair Collins. Is there a second? Awesome. Second by Ms. Gresham. Roll call vote is required. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Ms. Gresham? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes, more sufficient matter passes. Thank you, Carmelo, very much. Thank you. Okay, D is to approve the uh, Putnam Vocational Technical Academy uh, travel to Costa Rica, uh, June 24th through July 1st, 2020. Superintendent Warwick? Yeah, so we're a year ahead on this one, and uh, again, Carmelo's running this trip, but uh, the field trip circular is in your packet. I'm recommending approval. Thank you, Superintendent Warwick. Any, uh, yes? I just wanted to make sure that I told you that. Uh, come, on, come on up, come on up, come on up. <laughs> I was just wanting to say, the time of the board so that I don't have to come back next year and say the same thing and you guys get a chance to hear what we're doing ahead of time. I think it's you. great. Right. We love them when they come in ahead of time. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions or comments? And just Vice just Chair just Collins? Once again, $2,600 for the experience of a lifetime for these kids yes. is certainly, and they've got a year to go to try to raise money. Yeah. What and an opportunity. One of the things that I did was because a lot of our students are not necessarily wealthy, and um, this is gonna be a major undertaking for the family. I made sure that we provided two years prior to the trip happening so that in two years they can make up that money. Um, and at the same time, two years, we can plan fundraising and so on to raise money. Um, it just makes sense for us. The company didn't like it at first. They wanted us to do every year, and I said, no, if you can't do that, we can't do it. And 
our parents appreciate the two years. You're doing a great job. Well, there's, thank you very much. I appreciate there's it. There's more than uh, MCAS to education, and this is a big mm -hmm. life experience. Yeah, thank you for undertaking it on behalf of the students. Definitely. My pleasure. Thank Sorry, you. I also have a follow-up yeah. question. Yeah. Um, how long are the trips, by the way? Um, the China trip is going to be, I believe, 10 days, yeah, you gotta and the Costa Rica trip is going to be nine. Okay. And I've done the Costa Rica trip with students before, and again, it's extremely physical, and I start feeling my age when we're going down, you know, hundreds of steps to uh, a waterfall, and then have to go right back up that. <laughs> um, but my kids are the ones that I do it for. It's, I, I've had opportunities to travel, but I want them to have those opportunities. Very good. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, is there a motion on the floor? So motion by Ms. Naylor, is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Hurst. Roll call vote is required. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Yes, more than sufficient votes. This matter passes. Awesome. Thank you for what Thank you, you do. Thank you. E is to uh, approve the uh, Central High School Air Force Junior ROTC. Drill team students uh, traveling to Niagara Falls, West Seneca, New York, Dayton, Ohio, March 21st through uh, March 24, 2019, for the annual Air Force National Drill Competition. And don't be surprised if they bring back another championship. Superintendent Ward. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, we've certainly won a lot of championships in this arena, so a field trip approval piece is in your packet. I'm recommending approval. They've, every time they go to a competition, they bring back other trophies. We're going to have to put another addition on Central if they keep going <laughs> to fit all the trophies, but uh, this is great. I'm thrilled. Looks so, sharp. Yeah. Thank you, Superintendent Work. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, is there a motion on the floor? <coughs> motion by Ms. Hurst, who's a graduate of Central, who is a second. Second by Ms. Gresham. Roll call vote is required. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 More than sufficient votes. The matter passes. Congratulations and go get them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good luck. Real quick, sir. Sorry to interrupt. We knew we had a central alum up here, so we wanted to give her something to represent. Oh. When we go, some swag, Denise. Some swag. swag to represent. All right. Um, oh. There's two of us. Oh, oh, all that. Oh, right. yeah. I forgot. We're getting you one. Latonia, it says one team, one sound. Oh, that's um, and we will get another one for sure. You're already gonna show them. No, thank you. The reason oh, it I'm says so one sorry. team, one sound is because so sorry. our Lady Here Eagles team, the they are <laughs> what we call a affectionately slap and clap team. There you go. Oh, right oh, over to her. Oh. There you go. Oh. All right. Oh, we always got oh, one. This right. is great. Excellent. I wear your pullover all the time. I love it. Oh, That's right. No problem. And the, it says one team, one sound because they do a slap and clap routine. She's going to show you 10 Latoya, seconds of it. Go ahead. Show. That's it. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Beautiful group, intelligent group, and a group with rhythm, too. We like that. Okay. Uh, thank you. Now we will move to um, F is to approve the revisions of the Springfield Public Schools wellness policy. This is the second vote. Superintendent Ward, please. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, this has been through subcommittee where all the work was done, and this is the second vote. It went through the curriculum and program subcommittee. I don't know if, uh, Denise, you wanted to comment on it or... Recommend approval. Thank you, Superintendent Warg. Any questions or comments? So moved. He hearing none, motion by Attorney uh, Murphy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Hurst. The roll call vote is required. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Ms. Gresham? Yes. 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 Ms. Gresham? Yes.
uh, people to present on this program, and then I thought well, Denise has had to go through the uh, subcommittee. I'll let her speak to it, but I thought Stefania and Sarah, if you can give us just a brief overview of why we're recommending the Ready Math program for use in our K-5 schools, and I'm recommending approval. Excuse me, may I ask a question as you get yes, ready sir. to do the presentation? One thing that came up that I didn't think about yes the other day was that we're looking at doing a six-year commitment and I know we've been doing I ready at a one-year commitment renewal. Can you speak a little bit as well to why you are recommending to do it on a six-year instead of looking at a one-year renewal for ready math as we expand it? So ultimately sure. when we're looking at so we have been renewing on a year-to-year -year basis um, but when you look at the cost, um, usually when you go for more than one year, it's discounted much more. Okay. And typically when we buy all the books and everything, it's a significant financial commitment, so we stick with it for five or six years. And then years. the training that goes months. along with it well. So if you were to retrain teachers um, every year, it would be extremely frustrating for um, teachers as well as um, students because when you select a curriculum it usually it always goes from grade to grade and so uh, students become consistent with a pattern and so do teachers. Okay. And ready mathematics would be the core curriculum mm -hmm. so that would speak to the amount of training that would go into it as opposed to something that is more um, along the lines of iReady so when you're talking about a core implementation it's more involved than okay. the experience that we had previously. So if we have in the next three or four years, let's say, some change comes up where there's a, a change at the state level or something like that, and we need to see a change on our level, then we're prepared to do that through this program. Correct, because uh -oh. um, it's also online, and so they're not shipping uh, six years of stuff. So there's adjustments and revisions that are made as we go, mm -hmm. and that is one of the benefits when we have something that is also online um, because it can be changed as, it, as we move on. Thank you. Mr. Yes, Ms. Hirsch. So, so ready math, and I think you guys, you ladies said this the other night, but I just want to be clear. So ready math is the curriculum and I ready is the intervention? Yes. Okay. And so we're here to present um, on why we're selecting uh, ready math as a core curriculum that is and follows along the Massachusetts state framework. So it's based on the Massachusetts state framework and it is um, aligned to it. So when we, when we began the process of um, determining what core curricular resource we were going to put forward to uh, the committee for your approval, we really wanted to ensure that we vetted it through the strategic plan, knowing that if it hit the tenants and the four key priorities of the strategic plan, then it would be servicing our students and servicing um, the educators of Springfield in accordance with this document. So what you find in your packets this evening is um, each one of the key priorities and how we find ready mathematics in alignment with the priorities. So the first strategic plan priority is focused around um, coaching and developing educators. So what we have found through our vetting process is that um, in particular the online teacher toolbox provide, will provide our educators with um, a variety of um, points of, of knowledge in regards to the, of revisions to the 2017 Massachusetts math framework. So we want to ensure that our educators are abreast of those changes and that they have um, clear teaching points that they can utilize when they're working with the curriculum. Additionally, the learner's notebook, which will be their guide for professional development over the series of um, sessions that they'll have, um, really is, is based upon the National Council of the Teacher of Mathematics eight teaching practices, as well as their beliefs around productive versus unproductive struggle in mathematics. Um, furthermore, it, it is really focused on, on a text called Five Practices for Orchestrating Mathematics Discussions, which internally as a math department, we've been supporting our ILSs around for the past five years. So it's also linked to district-based professional development as well as national um, accom uh, accommodations for, the, for mathematics. Uh, furthermore, this year, we've had a, a real diligent focus on small group differentiation. It was launched during our August professional development. And Ready Mathematics has taken um, a real critical eye on how we can reach the, the needs of all students. They've provided sample weekly differentiation schedules, a variety of different types of lessons, and they also promote a station rotation model, which has been part of our elementary math block for a number of years. So it's providing those educative resources to our educators as they're moving through the program um, through their professional development. 
And to your point, um, Ms. Naylor, the um, connection to the iReady data will be invaluable. Really being able to have, at the first time, a program that is supporting that blended model between our intervention and our core curricular resource. We haven't had that in mathematics at the elementary level um, as, as of yet. So this would be a nice supplement that will further allow us to personalize instruction. Priority two focuses on ensuring that we have a aligned and rigorous curriculum built upon the 21st century um, knowledge and skills that we know our students need to compete in college and career. So as um, Stefania mentioned, it is aligned to the 2017 Massachusetts math framework. It actually goes beyond just aligning to the standards themselves. So within mathematics, we have three aspects of rigor that we're looking to address depending on the standard. This particular resource actually breaks out the types of lessons in alignment with those aspects of rigor. That was something that we were having to do behind the scenes. So this is actually doing that for us um, as, we, as we provide those access points to our students. Additionally, our students are no longer just held to content level standards. They're also held to practice standards, which are embedded with the standards of mathematical practice. Because it is educative in nature, this program is also embedding the standards for mathematical practice alongside the content standards. So our students will be getting access to both the content and the process standards. And we have been really diligent in Springfield about the blended learning model through our We Learn initiative, and this is providing that. As Stefania mentioned, we will have workbooks that will accompany the program, but we will also have an online digital component that will continue to provide our students with the digital tools they need in order to compete in college and career, but also to meet with success on the next generation assessments that are coming their way. And then finally, um, our students will really be entrenched in a discourse-based instructional model. We're always talking to our educators about how we can have students speak more about mathematics. And this program really allows the students to become the sense makers through a variety of routines um, that, they, that they include, such as think, share, compare, math sentence starters, discourse cards, and it also has explicit teaching strategies for our English learners. Actually, one of the lead writers, her focus is on English language learners and mathematics instruction. And she's one of the local, she's actually from UConn, and she's one of the lead writers of this text and has many educative materials built in to support our teachers with reaching the English learners population. Priority three is really focused on accurate and timely delivery of data. So not only will we have the iReady assessments, but there are also a host of um, formative and diagnostic measures that come along with this program, as well as reports. One of the most exciting features is the learning games report. Um, oftentimes, kids want to be in that game mode, and there are a host of truly um, wonderfully aligned uh, standards-based games, but this program actually provides reports on how students are performing on standards based on their interaction with those games. Not many, if any, programs actually offer reports on game usage that teachers can utilize in their classroom, as well as the formative assessments, exit tickets, quizzes, a variety of assessments that come with excellent reports that our educators can use. And then finally, um, supporting our students emotionally and, and socially in alignment with the uh, competencies laid forth by DESI. So by facilitating that mathematical discourse, it's leading to a greater sense of community within the classroom, allowing students to take risks, allowing educators to showcase multiple representations. It highlights growth mindset throughout the materials. It's connected back to productive struggle, as I mentioned, in the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Um, there's connections back to family and community. There's lessons and letters that are both available in English and in Spanish. And there's also diagnostic reports that can be printed in both English and Spanish that can support our students um, and our families in understanding where their child is falling within the standards. And the last piece, um, we did want to highlight again that this has come um, through Ed Reports, which is an independent, nonprofit agency designed to improve K-12 instruction with the highest ratings currently. Um, across all three gateways, so not just in terms of the standards, but also in terms of usability, which is how educators actually are finding it in terms of their ability to implement. So it's come across with some of the highest ratings across all three. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Any questions or comments pertaining to the presentation? Discretion? No, Go ahead. no. The floor is yours, Ms. Okay, so I, I, we had the same presentation similar to this on Tuesday, and I want to thank Mrs. Stefania and her team for the presentation. However, um, I'm not convinced that, um, based on the research that I did regarding iReady and Ready Math, 
that this curriculum will not increase our student learning. Um, it's, it, you know, it's not about one or two, three kids or students. It's about all our students. And we all know that grades K through five is crucial. And if a student do not get a solid foundation of learning and understanding during that stage of education, they're gonna have difficulty succeeding six through 12. And the last slide that you have here, when I pulled it up on Ed Report, it said they partially met expectation in all of the grade levels. So again, the, the reports that I've seen that have been presented are, are not in relation to the current curriculum that we're proposing. Um, so we are re proposing the most current addition, and I can't speak to what was happening prior. So my question too is why can't we do research on a program that our student will at least meet expectation or exceed expectation? Because if, if people go and Google it for themselves, they'll find out that Ed report is, is not good, it, it's not good. And I, I spoke, to, I didn't vote for this on Tuesday. Um, it, it's just not going to help our students. It's not, it's bias, it's not um, inclusive, it's not evidence-based. They, they graded themselves as a level three, which I consider is a, is a C, promising evidence. And that was in the information that I gave to um, the subcommittee about this. Can I just, uh, a point of clarification uh, for Ms. Gresham, is this the, uh, 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 the information she's obtaining, is this connected directly or is this old information at all? I mean, it went through subcommittees. So, all I mean, you're giving us all current. information that we have um, and all the research that we've done and that we've provided is what we've, um, what we've given you okay. and found to be current. So to maybe out of subcommittee? And, and, be, yeah, and based on that, it's the highest sure. rated program yeah. from yes. the reports, yeah. Can I just, if, I'll turn the floor back to Ms. Sure. Gresham or anybody else. Abs Ms. Hurst, I know you did a lot yeah. of due diligence on this. Absolutely, I mean, so I, so it's interesting because this came before the full committee a couple of weeks ago and we went back and did our mm -hmm. due diligence or the superintendent and his team did their due diligence. I will admit that I too got online and did some Googling and even did so as of this afternoon um, after I had gotten some calls from some ILSs in the mm -hmm. district. So it, so I will say the very same thing that I said in subcommittee the other day, which is I cannot profess to be an expert in curriculum. That's, that's not my area of expertise. Um, I am a parent of a child who attends a school in the district who uses Ready or iReady. Um, and w in talking to him and his teacher, um, it just so happened that I had that conference the day after we, it came out of subcommittee unanimously uh, that they talked about how positive this particular programming or this curriculum mm -hmm. is is. So I, I felt comfortable with that. I, you know, I feel like if we have a superintendent and a cabinet who's been charged with leading our district to do exactly what Ms. Gresham said, which is to make sure that our kids are learning and getting the very best material, then I believe that we need to defer to the experts. Um, I am not an expert, and I don't think that anybody on this dais is. And there has been no alternative that has been suggested. One alternative that was suggested to me today was Eureka mm -hmm. by one of the ILSs who called, and I went online and, and read it, and I was sharing with Mr. Collins um, earlier uh, this evening that it was interesting because they said, you can't believe what Ed Report says. Right. And when I read what Ed Report said about Eureka, which was the quote unquote best alternative to what we currently have in visions into this, Ed Report said it stood out among all of the curriculums. So do we believe them or do we not, right? So we are not gonna believe Ed Reports for this, but we're gonna believe them for Eureka. And so I don't, I don't have enough to make that decision. 
we have skin in the game and because we want to see all the kids in our district do well. And I'm just guessing that the superintendent and his staff also have a level of skin in the game because if you don't do well, then our kids don't do well. And then your superintendent is the one that gets held accountable. Mm -hmm. So I'm prepared to move, move forward with the curriculum that's been presented. And you also have pers a personal testament to that with your child. Well, and because I went in and also did my research because I didn't want to minimize what Ms. Gresham was bringing to the table. I thought, I let's, so. let's look, like maybe perhaps there is something else out there. You know, I understand that some of these um, entities are connected to other entities and there's some sort of financial yes. investment in that, but that's not what I saw. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, not what I, it's not what I saw and, and quite frankly, what, what I did saw was a complete contradiction. So, I mean, unless we can see something else, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, all of the information that was brought to our attention is from 2015. Some of it was 2015, not all of it. Well, the other not one was 2011. But some of it was you know, been later than that. But anyway, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I just want people to go on and Google it for themselves and see it. I mean, we, Ed Report, they are an independent research program. And they themselves evaluated them to be a level three. So why do we want our students to do mediocre, mediocre stuff? I don't, because as, as, as Mrs. Hurst said, if they fail, we fail. So, and I don't know, they pilot one school, correct? Excuse me? Lincoln, Lincoln School is the one that you piloted with this program, correct? There's other schools that are also piloting. Yeah, but well, you told us on, on Tuesday that we it was Lincoln from September from to September. From September, yes. September. That's okay. different. From so September, have you yes. tested? School that had the data yes, starting from September. From September. 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 Exactly. To, yes, but have they, have they um, tested those kids since then, the students? Have they been tested? The students to see at where Lincoln were. That was the data that we that provided we on Tuesday them. evening. Yeah, okay. And the, I'm, I'm not. And the other stu schools hadn't started in September, so we didn't feel like that was an appropriate amount of time to, that to gauge. Data, that data showed in, improvement. It did. In a short period of time. Mm -hmm. okay. It would have been, uh, and I would, Miller? if I may, it would have been helpful to have that as well presented because part of the reason why, and in, in <laughs> with me having a personal interest as well because I have children in the district that use the programs as well. And so when I did my research and checked with principals and talked to teachers and whatnot to find out what their perspective was and talk to my children and ask them about, about it, and I've seen the growth in them as well as the data that we saw. And so it was sensible to me to, that if we're already using an intervention and I ready to find a compatible uh, curriculum that is compatible with iReady versus if you purchase another curriculum, then now you have to purchase another intervention and now we're starting all over again. So if we already have something where it's showing progress and, and to your point on Tuesday, any of the schools that implemented iReady properly and did so according to the way the model suggests saw growth. And if that growth is, is what we're looking for, then, then I think that proves that it does what it needs to do. And so by adding now a curriculum that's added to that intervention, then says to us, well, if children at Lincoln and some of the other schools that are already improving have seen growth, then to expand that then to the other schools is to say that we're expecting to see growth there as well. And when you clarify for me, that over the next six years, if there are any changes to curriculum or if there are any changes that need to happen, that will be updated as we go year to year, then it lets me know that we'll stay compliant with the core requirements and with making sure our students aren't getting what they need. Thank you, Ms. Naylor. Any other questions or comments? And again, you have personal testament from two mothers who have children in the system. So with that, is there a motion on the, Ms. Gresham, thank you for uh, having the department do their continued due diligence on it. Is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Motion by Ms. Hurst. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Collins. Roll call vote is required. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Yes, more than sufficient votes this matter passed. Thank you very much. We'll now move to um, H. Uh, which is the approved the expenditure of four hundred thirteen thousand four 
$509 for the Department of Early Education and Care for the FY19 Community Preschool Partnership Initiative Grant, Superintendent Warwick. Thank you, Mayor. This is good news for the district. We had a very successful PEG grant in the district for several years. That PEG grant has, is now uh, coming to an end, and we won another grant, $413,409, to do a next round of, of pieces. It's not the same as the PEG grant. It's uh, looking at some different, different programming, some models for before and after school programming to extend time for students, and some inclusion models uh, work, having sped students in some of the regular classes and, and using the inclusion model, which has been found effective. So I'm recommending we approve the expenditure of the grant. Thank you, Superintendent. And it's been through the budget uh, committee. It's been through the budget and finance committee. It got a unanimous vote to recommend to the full committee. Um, and just one aside, they do it. The business department does an excellent job at seeking out grants. And to get almost, you know, close over a $400,000 grant means a lot to this system. Um, so it is, does come with full recommendation. Thank you, Vice Chair Collins. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, there's a motion on the floor. Attorney motion by Attorney Murphy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Hurst. Roll call vote is required. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Yes, more so we can vote this matter passes. Thank you. I is to approve the expenditure of $30,000 from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, DESE, uh, for the FY19 Innovation Schools Planning Enhancement Grant. Superintendent Ward, please. Thank you, Mayor. As you know, Renaissance School is an innovation school, and they want a grant for $30,000 for planning around the innovation strategies that they're employing at their schools. Innovation schools have more autonomies and flexibilities, and this grant is designed around improving performance of, of uh, minority students in, in uh, comparison to, uh, to narrow the gap. So I'm recommending approval of the grant. Thank you, Superintendent Work, and you can see the uh, excellent uh, product, the Renaissance, <laughs> with our student representative, Delfina Vigwadi, here also. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, is a motion on the floor. So moved. Motion by Vice Chair Collins, or second? Second by Ms. Gresham, I believe. Uh, roll call vote is required. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, more than sufficient votes, matter passes. Thank you very much. Jays to approve expenditure of $125,000 uh, from the Executive Office of Education for the FY19 Skills Capital Grant. Superintendent Warwick, please. Thank you, Mayor. This is our, for our Putnam Vocational Technical Academy, our vocational school, and this grant is going to be used to improve our, our welding, uh, welding materials for our sheet metal shop. So recommending approval of the grant. Thank you very much, Superintendent Warwick. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, is there a motion on the floor? So motion by Vice Chair Collins or second? Second by Ms. Hurst. Roll call vote is required. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, more than sufficient votes as a matter passes. Thank you very much. We'll now move to uh, section four, informational discussion items. I want to thank the uh, Sharif family for their, their patience. It's an outstanding award to recognize Ahmad Sharif for his service and commitment to Springfield's children, families, and community. Ahmad is one of our brave and dedicated uh, police officers. His mom, a dear friend Mabel, is another pub, all about community and public with Bay State uh, uh, health systems for our community. And the son and grandson is a championship wrestler out of Putnam Vocational Technical uh, wow. uh, Academy. Wow. So before I turn it over to uh, Superintendent Warwick and the school committee and bring you up, uh, uh, Ahmad, you, you know you have a great advocate in your mom because she knows how to diplomatically and aggressively uh, twist arms to make sure that Superintendent Warwick and I uh, were able to avail uh, a Brookings School to an outstanding program. And I, I've been there too. You, it's a weekend program that you have for our, our kids and uh, not only what you, you teach in the uh, self-defense, but the, I was there, you had robotics one time and the educational uh, component you do. so. We really wanted to uh, uh, honor you, so I'm going to uh, turn it over to Superintendent Warwick, and we would ask um, uh, Officer Sharif if you would come up, and anybody else you'd like to bring up, come on up to the podium.
Superintendent Warren. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I know Barbara recommended this, so I'd yeah. like to let Barb speak to it. Yeah. This is your yeah. baby, Barb. Yeah. to our meetings and one of the parents was saying how grateful she was with her son, her son going to um, the program that Officer Sharif have. And I thought, oh my goodness, we should recognize him because we really appreciate what he does in the community for our students and the longevity that he has put into this. And I'm sure his mom would be happy to tell us. <laughs> you got that right, Barbara. Yes, how long he's been doing it. So we, we really appreciate what he's done for the community. Yes, good afternoon, and I really appreciate you, and I uh, don't have the words to express how thankful we are. Uh, I remember I went to Barbara back in 2016. We've been there three years at Brooklyn. And I didn't come before the school committee. I sent a letter uh, saying how we need the school fee waived and yes. came back unanimously that yes, that we could do it. But I wrote why we were there. One of the reasons, now, now uh, um, Ahmad has been doing this. He started the Noble Warriors, uh, I think, 2007. Wow. Now, this, uh, it's a family thing that uh, his father and I had a karate way back in the 70s. We were even at the North End back then uh, teaching children. So he's carried this on. So what the program is the Noble Warriors, uh, the School of Noble Warriors, but uh, started the Old Hill Sports and Mentoring Program at Brooklyn School. We went to talk to Miss Poe, and she was- uh, Terry, I miss you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, uh, and she, she welcomed the program, but we was trying to figure out how to get in, so I say, well, I just asked the mayor and, and the superintendent, <laughs> skipped everybody else, <laughs> so <laughs> I did. Uh, but the Old Hill Sports and Mentoring Program, it offers youth healthy and safe eternity, that's who we are, to the streets. Our purpose is to provide engaging character building activities through sports and mentoring to help encourage staying in school, come back youth violence, preparing to become youth peer leaders, uh, providing healthy weight, because with all the exercise in the whole Old Hill neighborhood, thereby creating an environment to foster healthy attitudes amongst our youth, while building positive self-confidence and self-esteem in each child. We serve uh, ch youth ages five to 17, but now we have people in the 20s too. Um, uh, that's happened out as well. And with the particular focus on the Old Hill, that's how we started out. Old Hill neighborhood and especially students that attend Ellis Brooklyn School, and we find out we have several from DeBerry. <laughs> Our pro and they're also in Old Hill. Their approach is to teach healthy lifestyle while the children learn and understand ways to, you know, to stay safe and be healthy to achieve excellence for teaching youth, to provide youth a positive, fulfilling eternity to the streets, to develop healthy self-esteem in each child, and it's, it's a lot more a peaceful approach to uh, life. Um, so I think my son should speak now instead of me saying everything, but <laughs> I, I really, I, Oh, I got it covered. <laughs> and we have several students here, and I don't know. Yeah, yeah they're they still away. Can you please yeah. stand? St please. And, and parents. Yeah, they're in the up. house. Some, some of the children, had, that's, uh, some of the children, grades have improved, oh. improvement at home. We have all types of children with, uh, with some health issues. Nobody's treated different. And if my life depended on it, I couldn't tell who has autism or whatever else. They, they're treated the same, there's no bullying, and everybody uh, just worked together there, so. That's important, too. Thank yeah. you, Mabel. So. <laughs> Officer Sharif. No, oh, this is not, uh, this is junior now, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good evening. My name is Ahmad Sharif. And for me, the program starting back in 2007 was aimed to teach the youth discipline through self-defense, build self-esteem, and form good leadership qualities. 
The program has benefited me greatly growing up and has allowed me to excel in school, sports, and building relationships. For the use of Springfield and pretty much everywhere in the nation, it is essential for the younger generation to gain a positive perspective of the world because the media, TV, and a variety of political issues affect our society today. And that stuck with me at graduation, how you talk about the media. That's, That's right. big. Thank you, Michael. So in our emphasis on generation mentoring through martial arts, we aim to help the kids have a positive pursuit in life and share that energy with others. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Officer Sharif, that's right, Springfield Police Department. Yeah. Brave, Ugh. dedicated, and proud. Our officers giving back to our community. Officer Sharif. That's my work. <laughs> that's my work right there. Uh, Good work. Just like to thank my mom, my, my, uh, my team. Scratch them. Uh, I'm a public servant, not a public speaker. <laughs> so, uh, your actions speak loud enough. Yeah. I think I prefer to uh, go into a apartment with a knife willing subject, <laughs> disarm them, then to come up here and uh, <laughs> speak in front of a bunch of people. But I think they covered it all. You know, uh, my 20 years of work on the streets, Springfield, I uh, saw the need for this. Mm -hmm. We got a crisis out there. Yes. Uh, um, I'm seeing a lot of children go without, a lot of, a lot of uh, need, uh, in need of uh, resources. Mm. And um, every day, that's my mission. So uh, I appreciate this. We appreciate you. Yes. Uh, but we got a lot more work to do. Thank you. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, before, uh, before you sit down, I know there's school committee members that like to say a, a few words, so I'm going to turn it turn it over to them and we have an award for you and your team. So the, the floor is uh, school committee members of sure. Vice Chair Collins. I know he doesn't. Officer, you are what's representative of our police department. That's right. I know there's a lot of negative talk, but yes. this is what our loyal men and women in blue do day in and day out in That's the city right. of Springfield. That's right. And we all should loud that every chance we get. Now, for you youngsters over there, I know the mayor said Mabel twisted arms, and I know she raised a couple of generations of wrestlers. She just have excellent powers of verbal persuasion. She really didn't use any physical force. Uh, I'm just kidding around. Yeah. Truth, Thank truth, you from the, from the bottom of my heart, officer, for you and all of your comrades and what you do for us. Yes, sir. Truth be told, he leads by example. He showed it. He came to see the kids, not during the political uh, season. He just came to see them. That's what he does. It was great, and, and it's it, tough <laughs> to say no to your mom. Too. And <laughs> no, no fanfare, cameras, anything. He just came to show love, Saturday. and that's what he does. Thank he leads you. by example. Oh, so you lead by thank you. Thank you. Uh, we need more of it. Yes. All right. I, we, we need more of it. And so as long as you lead by example. Big advocate with Barbara Gray. And, I, and again, I can't uh, say enough about, about what you do. But also <laughs> Superintendent Warwick, uh, uh, without hesitation, said it's a good program for okay. our kids. And, All right. Uh, yeah. But I, I don't want to hog the floor. Any, <laughs> any, any, <laughs> uh, right. Officer. Um, Officer Sharif, I just want to say I thank you for your long years of jeopardy, your mm -hmm. dedication, your compassion, and your love, and the love that you have for the students that you do what you do with. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And I, First? I would just like to say I just follow you on my mother's orders. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. 
good son. Yeah. <laughs> it's hers. I, I just wanted to underscore what, what Chris said because he's right. Right? We want our young men and and ladies to see good officers and you really have done such an amazing job. So thank you for your service to our community and to our children. And thank you, Ms. Sharif, for raising such a wonderful son. Um, there's many generations that stand behind him and I'm positive that the city will continue to reap <coughs> lots of benefits from the Sharif family. Thank you. Superintendent of Schools hereby recognize Ahmad A, and we should say A plus, three, <laughs> with sincere appreciation and gratitude for his countless contributions to the Springfield community, for his unwavering work toward with the positive development of our children and young adults spanning decades, for his special skills, knowledge, heartfelt desire to make a difference for all his dedicated years of service to all of us as a brave and dedicated Springfield police officer. Yes. Presented on this 14th day of March 2019, signed by all the school committee members, myself, and Superintendent Warwick. Come on down, Officer Street. <laughs> Cohen half camera will travel once take a photo <laughs> shot. <laughs> Mabel, 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 you gotta get up here, Mabel. <laughs> Mabel, come on up here. You may help Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jennifer, come on everybody, come on over. Barb, Barb, can yes. you Teddy, can you get everybody? Yeah. Gotta make sure you Barbara, get Barb. Why don't you go Barbara, down stand Barbara, Barbara, yeah, why? Don't you go down and stand Yeah, there. just wait one second, Ed. Well, Ed, hold on. We're getting Barbara down here. One second, Ed. Ed, hold on. Get Barbara. Get Barbara. Get on the other side. Okay. You got him? Sometimes that makes you stand on your head, too. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, families, for being here tonight, too, and young ladies and young men. We appreciate that immensely. I know. Okay, uh, we'll now move to uh, uh, B, which is Springfield Promise Program Presentation. Superintendent Warwick, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Dr. Yolanda Johnson and Apple Joseph have been running a great program here in Springfield, the Springfield Promise Program, to uh, aid students in this college-going process. We've made tremendous progress over the last several years, and they're gonna give us an update on the program, and Latonia called me a week or two ago and had been to a, a presentation and said, we've gotta get them up in front of school committee. So here they are, but they're doing great work, and I think sometimes we forget to bring forward some of the great things that are going on. Oh. Mayor was very supportive in this, uh, helping us put this together with some money left over from the control board, yeah. but now we have college advisors in every high school helping our kids with a college-going process, which is something we want for, for all of our kids. So this is an important program to us, and, I, and uh, Yolanda and Apollila have done a great job with it. So without further ado, I'm gonna bring them forward to bring you up to speed on the program. Hey, Ed. 
Ed, you're part of the program. <laughs> right, go, Ed, Ed, go ahead, take the quick photo, Shepherd. <laughs> I didn't know you were on our payroll, Ed. <laughs> Thank you. Why is he not on Springfield Promises? <laughs> Okay. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I needed a laugh. Okay. So thank you for having us this evening. Thanks for your patience. Of course, not a problem. Perfect. Clickers working, we're all good. Uh, so we're happy to be here. Um, the Springfield Promise Program. Um, so as, uh, and thank you for that introduction, Superintendent Warwick. Uh, so the district brought us in-house, um, which really has been a really incredible shift from the way things were ran previously. I'm a graduate of Springfield Public Schools, SciTech, yeah. woohoo. And some of you, for those of you who have been on the school committee for a while, you would remember my brother, Pierre Joseph, Central oh, Class of 2010. Yeah, he's up here. And doing very well, too. Yes, he is. Yeah. Um, and so I was a student that was served by a program like this while I was in high school. Even though my parents are college educated, the financial aid process is something that's always changing. And at the time, my father was deployed. So my mom was a single parent and she had my twin brothers going to college first and then me. And so that process for anyone can be very difficult. So I can say I am grateful to have this program here in the district and still going strong. I have with me tonight most of my team. We are a very small but mighty team. Ms. Foster, who is our volunteer and has over 30 years of college access experience, so we are so blessed to have her with us. Yvonne Howard, who is our advisor at Central High School and also at Gateway at Stick. Dejana Bornegal, who is our advisor at Commerce and Duggan Academy. Alexander Rodriguez, who advises in the Conservatory of the Arts, as well as uh, Bay State Charter and Sabbath Charter. And Joseph Page, who was our rock star advisor at SciTac. Coach, Coach Page, yeah. Yeah, Coach Page, um, as well as Phoenix Charter. So as you may have heard, we serve as Springfield Public Schools, but also three charter schools here in the city. So again, we are a small but very mighty team with a lot of ground to cover. So our goals, um, really we want to support all students in graduating high school, college, and career ready. And so part of that is educating students and parents about the college financial aid process because it's something that they're going to have to do every year that students are in school. We assist students in finding a way to make post-secondary education attainable and affordable, more importantly, to get them thinking beyond that just that first year of college. And we educate students in grades 9 through 11 so that they enter their senior year fully aware of what that college process is going to look like for them and that they're aware that there are supports available in the building to help them through that. And so again, since we became, you know, one family in the district, it has allowed for deeper collaboration between the financial aid advisors, school counselors, supports that are already existing in the buildings. And so it's just added capacity to the college planning teams that have already been in existence. So an overview of our services. So one thing we pride ourselves on is making sure that we meet with every senior so we can have that one-on-one -on -one time to get to know them and understand what their plans are post high school. And so whether that is going to a traditional college, whether they're looking to go to a work training program, FAFSA, you need it for a lot of different things and not just traditional college. And that's the one thing that students don't realize initially. We also obviously support with those forms, the FAFSA, the CSS profile, verification, which is something that is growing more rampant among poverty, um, low-income students, and urban students. And that's something that we've seen over the years and is just being more um, challenging to navigate that process. Colleges are going to reach out and ask for more verification paperwork, and that's something that parents struggle with. I have to say, on the fast front, having two young daughters in mm -hmm. college now, uh, the assistance uh, that you're able to give families, because it could be a, a daunting, a daunting process. Oh, yeah. And, you know, people might just throw their hands up and go, we're not going to continue with it. So the fast for that's, uh, can't put a price tag on what you do. Oh, yeah. That. And it's always changing, too. They just updated it this summer. Yeah. So it looks totally different. 
Uh, we, of course, help with scholarships, and we have a scholarship of our own that we administer. Uh, reviewing award letters and assisting with those appeals, and so that's one thing that families don't really understand that you need to review every award letter that you get in because you can appeal those awards and kind of work to negotiate the best package possible and also thinking not just for that first year of college, but we want to see our students make it all the way through college. And so affordability is a key piece of that. Reviewing those student aid reports and making sure there's no errors on that and those are also required for a lot of scholarships. Uh, and we also provide summer melt work, and so we work in close collaboration with our school counselors to be available for students during the summer, so as they make that transition to college, they can still reach out to us for support. So summer melt is that phenomenon where students will commit to college and then something happens over the summer, whether it be for financial reasons or personal reasons where our students are not matriculating. So we make sure that we are available to students and families so that they can come in and see us over the summer and get support on whatever it may be doing that entrance counseling, signing your master promissory note, finding those last dollars to make that fall bill work where they are more available for students and families. In addition to supporting seniors, we also do light touch points with students in grade nine through 11. And so that looks like a, a presentation that we'll do with students throughout the year. Ninth graders, we really focus on the importance of preparing co for college early and what that looks like. When you start in ninth grade, that is what colleges are beginning to look at, not just your grades, but what activities you're involved in, how you are serving your community. For our 10th graders, uh, we continue stressing the importance of preparing early for college, but we also begin to focus more on making sure that students are in school every day because attendance matters and those habits that you form early on are gonna inform how you perform in college. We also focus on the MCAS. 10th grade year is that MCAS year, and it's necessary for graduation, but it's also our students' first opportunity to earn a college scholarship. So it's a test that you have to take anyway, so why not do well on it so you can get those scholarship dollars? And for our 11th graders, we provide an overview of the college financial aid process, and students are able to create their FSA ID. For, so for those of you who might be more familiar with the PIN for FAFSA, the FSA ID is the new version. Uh, and so they can create that during their junior year so that they are prepped and ready to go for their senior year. And we also survey each of the grades. So we're getting an idea of what their post high school plans are and how we can continue to support them in that. Whether or not they have fears about college affordability, whether or not they're a first generation student, and their interest in our summer related activities. So we're using all of this data that we're collecting to continuously inform our practices. Summer engagement, so as I said, we are available for summer melt prevention, um, and so we will do emails, text messages, walk-in hours, um, anything we can to reach out to those recent graduates to make sure that they are making it to college in the fall. We also offer workshops for our rising seniors to give them that jump start. So getting them started on scholarships early, getting those college essays out of the way over the summer, getting them started on the common application, making sure they have their FSA ID not only for the student but also for the parent. And we also do college tours, which is a great opportunity for our students to get their feet on a college campus and begin to envision themselves there. Um, at some point in the future. And so it really helps students get an idea for where they want to go um, and begin, again, thinking about college early on. So just to give you an overview of our FAFSA completion progress to date, so we are currently in our third year uh, since we became in-house financial aid advisors. Uh, previously, our services were um, ran through a nonprofit out of Boston. Um, and so at the time, the district had a 50 to 54% FAFSA completion rate. Immediately after um, we brought those services in-house, we saw a 10% increase, which was awesome. And that really speaks to the increased collaboration that we're able to have at our high school base teams. And for this past school year, we had a FAFSA completion rate of 64%, so holding firm, um, but we were also within three percentage points of the state FAFSA completion rate. And currently, Massachusetts is number two in the country for FAFSA completion, so we are doing very well. In addition to um, our last dollar scholarship, so this scholarship is really intended to help reduce the financial gap that many students face when they're attending college. And so we have learned um, throughout the years that we've been operating ways to tweak this so that we're ensuring that our students who need the scholarship the most are receiving it. 
And so for this past school year, um, awards ranged from $500 to $2,500, and we had 86% of our students who were awarded follow up on that scholarship. Um, and so that is huge, because oftentimes kids are still awarded scholarships, and they're not doing the things that they need to do to follow up and close those gaps. So we've learned from our past um, and made improvements, and we've seen a huge improvement when it comes to last dollar scholarships for this school year. We do have some upcoming events, and we are very conscious of our FAFSA completion rate, so we are offering um, rotating open hours at the four core high schools, so Putnam Central, SciTech, and Commerce, um, to give families another opportunity to come in and get that FAFSA support. Next Wednesday, we will be having a senior family presentation, um, just to inform them on what their next steps are after the college acceptance, and so that'll be at Renaissance next Wednesday. Um, and we will also have a Q&A session um, with, in partnership with some of our school counselors, and it'll also serve as the kickoff for our last dollar scholarship. And May 22nd, something that I'm really excited about, is we are looking to do a selective college night. So I am a student that graduated from Springfield Public Schools and attended a highly selective college, Smith College. Yeah. And so one thing I know is that in order to prepare to go to those types of schools, you have to start early. And so our hope with the selective college night is we're looking to invite as many selective colleges as we can to come and do a college fair, but also offer workshops for students and parents to talk more about what they need to do to prepare early. And this is something that when you think about you know, neighboring districts and how they begin to prepare their students early, we need to do the same thing to make sure that our students are prepared and ready and understand what it takes to go to a selective college. So what we're hoping to do with that event is have families in the building, be able to have face time with those college admissions counselors, and also have parents and alums who have graduated from Springfield Public Schools, because we have kids that do it every year, and bringing them back and putting them in person and in face um, of, our, of our students um, so that they can ask questions and learn about what it was like when you were in high school and how you got to where you were. Uh, so for that event, we're looking to open it up for 8th graders all the way through 11th graders. And we thought it was really important to include those 8th graders because their college process is going to start as soon as they hit high school. And so we really want to get them early so we can set the tone for what their high school experience will look like. So we're very excited about that coming up. Um, and so of course, um, and being a part of this program, we recognize opportunities for growth. And so some things we're continuously doing is looking for ways to increase our community outreach, which is how I was able to connect with Ms. Naylor. Um, and so we have connected with some local churches and community centers, um, and we're looking to continue to expand that. We are also looking to expand our parent engagement, which is something that we can't do enough um, because, as you know, financial aid really is an entire family affair, and we cannot do it just with students. So we are continuously looking for ways to expand our parent engagement and working with the PACE Center and our parent facilitators and PTOs within the buildings. Um, so we are continuously looking to expand that. Any questions? Ms. Joseph, I have to say that was an outstanding presentation. You. You, Dr. Johnson, Yolanda, great team that you have there. Uh, tell your, your brothers that uh, I said will. hello. Best thing we ever did in consultation with Superintendent Warwick and, and my CAFO, TJ Plant, a few years back, saying this, we, this program was not maximizing mm -hmm. how it should be, with all due respect to, to the Boston. Uh, right. and, and there wasn't a, uh, uh, the, the, the outreach uh, that we needed. I just said to the superintendent, a couple things you mentioned, that wasn't being done before. The college visits, the, right. uh, the other uh, reach out that you have, and, and that's what it's all about, to Absolutely. make sure. And you're a great role model, because when they I say tried, to you, you, where'd you go? <laughs> I went to SciTech. Where'd you go to college? I went to Smith. So yeah. that in itself is, is a testament. So uh, again, I'm so happy. Uh, it, there was trials and tribulation when we said we're going to make this move, but it was, mm -hmm. it was for the right, uh, right reasons. Show kids uh, and families that you can and you will go to college, not just for one year. That was an important point. Right. You know, the, we want to see them go through. The old through. way was, oh, we, you know, we got them in the college, and we'd say, well, are they still continuing college? And there was right. a, the, the continuity. So tremendous, and we're very happy. But I'll open it up to the school committee for any questions that, or, or superintendent, any questions or comments they might have. 
for sure. May I ask a question? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. I, I thought you did a really great job. Yeah, you did well. a great job. Thank you. Great uh, job. So I just have a question about the last dollar, sc dollar scholarship. Mm -hmm. Do you have an amount of how much you have given over the course of the last couple of years that it was brought in in-house? And how does that get funded? So we are funded through the trust that's set up with the city. So typically we award about $100,000 each year, but again, students have to yeah. accept the award and provide an enrollment verification so we know that they are in school before we disperse those funds. So that's why we are not at 100% of students following through on that. And of, those, of that $100,000, how many students benefit from that? Is it 10? So um, for this past year, we awarded it to 109 students, and so we had 86% of them um, follow through and actually accept that award. So it was like nine, I can't do math right now, but like 97, 98 in that, in that range. So I'm not putting us on the spot or anything, but I just literally, before I came down here, um, was reading that the Westfield Promise just helped to fund early college. What's do we have the, the capacity to do something like that? Because we heard some of the other students talk about how beneficial that was to them. Yeah. I just wondered because I had literally, it had just hit Mass Live when I was logging off and then for you to present, I was just mm -hmm. wondering. Assistant uh, Superintendent Lydia Mark, she's our uh, direct conduit with Westfield State University, which we have uh, made programs and deals with. Just to let you know, at the close of the control board, which was now well over 10 years ago, that was a deal we cut with uh, Chairman Chris Gabrielli, who now has helped us with the empowerment zone that uh, uh, the money uh, through our financial uh, uh, financial aspects of getting the city back on track, we wanted to kick back to the school system. So that was a deal that we cut through the city and implementing it uh, to get our kids into college. Assistant Superintendent Martinez. So the Westfield Promise is a partnership that we have with Westfield State University where our 11th and 12th graders at two of our high schools, right now Commerce and Putnam, it's a dual enrollment program that we've put together with them and we were awarded um, the college stamp and then we were just awarded $197,000. Okay, so it's just called Westfield Promise, it's not the same as no, it's okay. two different okay. programs, and it's called the Westfield Promise because it's not just Springfield. It, it's a couple other districts, and we all work together to do a to dual enrollment. And the students, they in 11th grade, quickly what they do is a stretch course, so they actually graduate with 12 credits from our high school. In um, their junior year, they actually, Westfield State University staff teaches with our staff here at two of our high schools. And then senior year, we take them over to Westfield State University. So it's part of the dual enrollment program that we have going with the district. Okay, I apologize, Ms. Joseph. I didn't know if they were just if, synonymous. If I could up with Lydia. Sure, after Ms. Hirsch is done. If I, no, I just didn't know if it was synonymous, if it, there was a Springfield Promise and a Westfield Promise. So that's why I asked the question. Mm -hmm. If I could follow up I on one of the do. statements you just made, Lydia. Um, <coughs> the students graduate with 12 college credits? Yes, sir. How are those paid for? Um, we just received the grant part. Um, so last year, this year actually $4,000 is all we had to subsidize and it came out of the school budgets. And then the rest of it we received the scholarship that we wrote together to offset the cost. Is that something we could explore with Promise as something to do, to do for students through the Promise program as part of returning to Springfield kids? And could we start those conversations and see if there's a possibility? Yeah, so we, um, so they actually do, they actually applied for the last scholar dollars last year for some of the kids that are going um, for this year because this is the first year that they, we graduate last year's juniors. So we started last year for the first year, so those juniors are now our seniors that are now at Westfield State and we're working um, with the last scholars, so they did apply for that. They, all those kids have their FAFSAs done, all that stuff has been done, and so yes, and we're also mirroring it with um, Reach to Teach, so we're trying to get some of those kids to yeah. be teachers and come back. So we've been really working, Dr. Johnson and myself and others, to really tie in everything that we're doing together, so we have a comprehensive plan for not just scholarships and FAFSA, dual enrollment, we just have so much great stuff going together that we've been really working now to put it together. We, we just did what we called the Nipsey Institute, was, which was the National Post-Secondary Institute, to really get some of this work all done together, so yes. Interesting, good, yeah. thank you. 
So, I, and also, you know, where there are other colleges, but Westfield State, which I'm an alumni of, also uh, the 100 males uh, to college that we do with Dr. Yolanda Johnson, the teachers that we make a deal that you come back on at the urban ed program, which I had a couple interns early on in my administration, we were able to get in there to, to, to go to college uh, on it. And we have other programs with our other local colleges here uh, uh, in, in the city to show the families and, and the uh, young ladies and young men, you can and will go to uh, go to college. And, and again, I wanna give a shout out, Ms. Foster again, thank you for volunteering. That's uh, very, very nice of you. Mm -hmm. And Mayor, the gear up, the gear up program is also tying together because for the first time we took all the seniors to the Basketball Hall of Fame for a college fair. Yeah. So there's a lot of great stuff going on. And the college visits, again, the, when I mentioned the superintendent work, that's key, mm -hmm. getting the student and other families on, on, on the campus. The floor is open to the school committee members. I would just like to, Ms. Uh, again, reiterate this, my appreciation for the program and, and the proactive uh, manner in which you all strategize how to bring this program. I, I was working with the other program in my other capacity in my, uh, when I, in my former job, and they did a good job. But to Mr. Mayor's point, yeah, this yeah. program has really yeah. grown and flourished in a way, and I was so impressed. That's why I went to superintendents that we have to present this, have it presented at the school committee meeting, because there are so many phenomenal things that are happening in our district, and we know that there are challenges, but when you look at the good that's happening and the resources that we have for our students, um, I run the AmeriCorps program, and one of the <coughs> members said, I'm impressed at the fact that there's just so much out there for these students and a lot of times they're not able to access the resources because they don't know that they're there right and so this is a program that you all are doing a phenomenal job of just being present i was at putnam and i saw all over the screens just telling the children reminding the students to come and sign up with miss hudson and all that stuff and so this is is really speaks to the fact that we're not only concerned about our students graduating but getting them to college yeah. and helping them that first year is the most difficult year so the fact that you have something in the first year and a fall you know, semester and really making sure they're on track and helping them. That's huge. So kudos to you and your team and Dr. Johnson, um, Assistant Superintendent, for just really spearheading this and making sure that it's, it's doing what it needs to do and, and I'm looking forward to continued growth. Thank you, we appreciate your support. Thank you, Ms. Snell. Any other questions or comments from Ms. Joseph? Uh, just like to thank award. Dr. Johnson and, and Appalila for their great work on this. And, and recognize the mayor. This program was being run out of Boston and we weren't pulling it together like we wanted to. Uh -huh. And you can see the increase in the FAFSA rate, which is a lot of work. So, you know, just congratulate their great work and congratulate our team that's with us tonight too on the great work. We so appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's Stats Mom right there, yeah, too, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mom, so. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very, very much. We'll now move to reports of standing committees. Uh, a is student relation, parent concerns. That's Ms. Gresham. No reports, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Gresham. B is building and maintenance committee. That's Vice Chair Collins. Other than the fact we've received a few of the approvals on some of our submittals, um, no report, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Collins. C is the Legislative and Contracts Committee. Again, Ms. Perez is unable to be here due to a, a family aspect. A D is Curriculum and Programs Committee. Ms. Nothing, Hurst? Your Honor, outside of what came but before report this it. evening. Thank you, Ms. Hurst. E is Budget and Finance Committee. Vice Chair Collins? Uh, we covered three of the items on the, on the regular budget. And the just a reminder to people that mm -hmm. tomorrow is the last day for people to give input on the uh, so go on to our website and give us input on the budget, please. Thank you, Vice Chair Collins. Any questions or comments? Okay, uh, F is Vocational Education Committee. Attorney Murphy? Uh, no report, Mayor. Thank you, Attorney Murphy. G is Technology Committee. Ms. Naylor? None at this time. Thank you, Ms. Naylor. H is School Safety Committee. Ms. Gresham? No report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Gresham. And the special subcommittee on staff demographics, that's Ms. Perez again, she's uh, due to family aspects, uh, unable to attend uh, this meeting. Uh, we'll now move to the report of uh, the student representative of the school committee, Delfina. No report, sir. Thank you very much. 
always active with the community. We appreciate that. That's awesome. I didn't she know jumps that right in there. right off the bat. So. <laughs> I didn't know that that was on there. And that's a great initiative that we have that, that the representative, student representative can have their own yeah. time. That's cool. Now the superintendent has his own time. Report <laughs> of the superintendent, <laughs> Superintendent you, Warwick. Some information in your packet. The top piece uh, in my report is the grad dropout. The final figures came out for the year. There's a piece in your packet on it. And it was a, another bit of good news for Springfield. Overall, and Paul, um, Paul Foster is going to do an in-depth report in a few weeks on it. Um, the numbers are, are still moving in the right direction. Um, overall graduation rate, we had made tremendous gains last year. We were up to 76.9. Yeah. We held at 76.9 this year while the state dipped, so we narrowed the gap again with the state. The five-year cohort rate, our increase this year was 7.3 percent, still moving in the right direction, up to 77.9 percent, the highest it's ever been. Our dropout rate, we held at 5.1. As you know, we've decreased at 50 percent from over 10 percent. So uh, and the state uh, went in the other direction this year, so we, we narrowed the gap. Paul's going to do an in-depth presentation, breaking out the schools and everything else at the next meeting. But I, no, you've seen something on the news, so I wanted to get it to you. The mayor mentioned this earlier, but I just wanted to highlight a few uh, winter team accomplishments. Yeah. Our uh, boys basketball team, you know, uh, Putnam won the, the boys Western Mass and is going to be playing for the state championship at WPI at 645 on Saturday. So congratulations to them. We went down to Worcester the other day, watched them in the semifinals. They were absolutely spectacular, and they played a really tough and very, very tall uh, team from Acton Boxborough, and mm -hmm. they played their hearts out and out, played them, and just played a great game. And our girls uh, played before them and won the Western Mass, but they won their semifinal against Franklin. Gee. Again, that had an enormous height advantage over our girls, but our girls played with a, a, a real heart and tenacity. They full court pressed the whole game, put pressure on the other team, and are on to the state finals again. They're going to be playing Braintree, which three out of the last four years they've played for the state championship, so that, that should be a great game. Uh, our central wrestling team won Western Mass, states, and all states. So incredible performance by uh, Coach McLaughlin and our wrestlers. And I also included in your packet information on individual awards from some of the teams. We're going to bring all our teams down for recognition that won Western Mass championships at an upcoming meeting. Um, there's also some articles about the boys' games that were in Worcester and, and the girls' game that were outstanding. We had a great uh, <clears throat> night the other night over at Putnam where oh, we yeah. dedicated our media center to Michael Rogers and our sheet metal shop to Antoinette Pepe, and it was well attended and uh, really a nice event recognizing uh, two former school committee members uh, for their great work on the school committee and all they did for Springfield. The last thing I have is the contracts report, and that's in your packet in detail. And we added a little more detail to that uh, to give you just a little more with that part. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you, that Superintendent Warwick. Report, Any questions, Superintendent? <clears throat> okay, hearing none, we'll move to unfinished business. Yes. Yes, oh. Vice Chair Collins. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you often state that in, in subcommittees is where we do the real work of this committee. And, that's right. and, and in those discussions, we get very in-depth beyond policy and beyond some of the real scope of our authorities. And when we start talking about um, curriculums and then the materials to teach them, the, the discussions go into great depth. But it is incumbent upon us to remember our role as school committee. And we have certain procedures that the law gives us, hiring the superintendent, setting the budget. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the day-to-day -day delivery of education, that is in the purview of the department and the superintendent. And our discussion tonight kind of waltz back and forth across it. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't see a need to stop it, just I think we need to remind ourselves sometimes that our real there is one more role that's been kind of archaic, it's been left over in the law, that when they did the ed reform, they didn't take away. And our real role during that discussion was approval of textbooks. That still is in Chapter 71 for us, where we approve textbooks. And that was the real role, and that had actually taken place earlier. Um, 
And I, and I don't want to discourage the kind of discussions that go on in subcommittees where we get all kinds of in-depth explanation, but when it gets on to the full committee, we should try to stick with what our parameters are. Thank you, Vice Chair Collins. Questions or comments? Okay, uh, any uh, other unfinished business? Hearing none, any I have new? a question. Yes. Sorry, Ms. I know it's late. That's okay. Um, so tomorrow, I know that we are going to be having a celebration that I'm really excited oh, yeah. about. Thank you. We should have mentioned that. Yes, I just wanted to bring it up. Uh, if Superintendent, if you would like to elaborate a little bit more on it, but I'm really excited about our celebration of our crossing guards that we're going to have on tomorrow at Central. Uh, as many know, our crossing guards do a lot of work, and they go out there, rain, sleet, snow, you name it, they're out there dark, early in the morning, late, it doesn't matter, they're out there. There's one near my house, he's always singing and everything, and just okay. excited about out, being out there to make sure that, that the children are safe, getting where they need to go. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to the celebration on tomorrow. Yeah, thank you so much, Latonia. I forgot that uh, we have a celebration for our crossing guards tomorrow at Central High School. Latonia made a great rec recommendation. They're really unsung heroes out there. I think when you're uh, going back and forth to work in the winter, you really appreciate what they're doing out there, but they're out there in tough situations, sometimes even shoveling for kids and making sure our kids are okay and, and bonding with our kids and, and talking to them and getting to know them. So mm -hmm. they're a group that doesn't usually get recognized. So we're gonna have a nice recognition yeah. for them tomorrow. I was remiss and I missed that one. Thank you, Latonia. But uh, that was a great yeah. idea. And isn't there one individual who's been doing it for somewhere around 35 years? No, Pat Yacovoni. Pat, yeah. Pat is 50 years, like 50, 50 years. years. That's a long She's right time. on right on Biltmore and uh, Dickinson Street. I beep the horn and wave at her every morning when wow. I head uh, downtown. And I'm glad you brought that up. We're in the midst yeah, of uh, St. Patrick's Day, the City Hall celebrations. So it's going to be difficult for some of us, but they are the extra pair of eyes and ears uh, that are there for our kids day in and day out. Uh, and I'm glad, Latonia, you brought it up. And Superintendent Warwick is moving on this with Maria. We did it some years ago when Jack Maloney, God rest his soul, we honored the the, uh, uh, the crossing guards. That was quite a few years ago when we did that. So um, that's excellent recognition. And I know we're going to, I think it's at 11 and we're in, in the middle of things, but we want to make sure if they're watching, we appreciate what they do day in and day out. They're unsung heroes. And uh, to uh, Mrs. Iacovoni, to Pat, uh, uh, she's a hot ticket. And 50 <laughs> years, 50 years of doing that. So thank you, uh, Ms. Naylor, for bringing that up. And perhaps we could not let it go seven years or longer. Yeah, it was, uh, it was we, a while ago, we, Chris. We, we do honor the uh, paras annually, so I think yeah. the crossing guards probably deserve the same kind of respect. You're absolutely right. Yeah, no, it was a great idea and uh, so appreciated. And also in subcommittee, we did a lot of work on it, but we've also upgraded some of the equipment right. yeah. to make it safer for folks because they really are out there in tough elements, but they're also battling some really tough traffic situations because uh, some of our drivers aren't huh. always adhering Very disrespectful. to the traffic rules. So uh, they were they're out there and they're in danger. So the school committee appropriated money to update the safety equipment, which I really appreciate. Thank you. Any other unfinished business? Thank you again, Ms. Naylor, for bringing that up. Any uh, new business? Uh, hearing none, I'd like to just tell everybody, to say to everybody, happy St. Patrick's Day. And again, to our uh, uh, Central girls team and Coach Marr who does an outstanding job with those girls on and off the court and the Shep, Coach William Shepard, means business with those boys on and off the court. You know that, Amon, right, Junior? Uh, we wish them uh, success uh, this Saturday for them to bring back the state championships that we've had here from the Central girls and the Putnam Vocational Technical Academy uh, Boy, so we're very proud of uh, these uh, scholar athletes and, and champions. Any other new business? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Could we just talk about the young lady from Putnam today who represented the district in front of oh, three yeah, yeah. girls oh. and three? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Denise, uh, school committee woman Denise Hurst on her other hat is at Stick as, as a vice president there. And we had Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito in town with our building trades. This is the biggest event ever, and we were very appreciative of President Cook. He always opens up stick for us, and we had 300 young ladies there from all across Western Mass, very good representation from Springfield. And um, we sat with the Putnam uh, girls, and the uh, 
the MC and the girls that spoke from Putnam did an outstanding job showing uh, that uh, our young ladies can pursue these mm -hmm. uh, careers, whether in STEM and or in the building trades. There's great fields for them uh, on it. And yeah, they did it. And, they, and the red coats were there too, the, the Putnam <laughs> red coats. They, they had the red coats on, they were there too. So it was really, uh, well, you know what I'm talking about, right? The red coats, you know that. So, uh, so it was really outstanding. Thanks. Thank you, Denise. Yeah. And I don't know if you want to comment, Denise. No, I, I agree with you. I just wanted to recognize yeah. you because the young lady did do a really good job. Lucy, yeah. You know, garnering a crowd of 300 yeah. young ladies and the people that came out to the different trades and yeah. labor unions that came out. It was really amazing. Thank you, Ms. Hirsch. Uh, anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Ms. Hirsch. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Gresham. All those in favor say aye. All aye. those opposed, the ayes have it. Good evening and thank you for watching. Hey, Tashani, it's good to see you. Well, well said, Mrs.